we need to have the humanity to treat them with, with decency and respect. We're better, or should be better, as a country uh, than, than providing this kind of, of accommodation for, for human beings. I don't think it should be used as accommodation anywhere. My name's Councillor Carolyn Parks and I'm Mayor of Portland, but in this I'm acting in a, a personal capacity. Portland Town Council has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with this action and nor does the, the uh, being a mayor. Can you talk to me a little bit about the action? Yes, um, what, what's happened essentially when uh, the Home Office and Portland Port did this deal in private behind the backs of everybody, they, they denied the opportunity of local people and local stakeholders, the, the local authority, Dorset Council, to regulate what they were doing in, in planning terms. I firmly believe that there's a, a strong argument that uh, a, a judicial review should be taken on the, the decision to put the barge in, in Portland Port on the basis of planning. And I think if they'd have had to have gone through the planning process, they never would have gotten the, a, approval for it. Can you talk to me about your personal objections to the barge? My personal objections are humanitarian and they have always been humanitarian. I, I think it's, it's cruel and unusual to put some of the most traumatised individuals in, in the world on a barge in Portland Port. The barge itself was made for 220 people. Its capacity has been more than doubled. We, we had a, a site visit and when I actually went on the barge I was horrified to see just how small these rooms were. I'd taken a, a tape measure on board with me and I measured three of the rooms and they averaged out at around about 10 feet by 12 feet and that's not including the bathroom. The, the beds, the bunk beds are, are small as well. The, the mattress length is, is six feet. So if you're a tall person, you've got a problem. The, the uh, whole corridors, the, the very thin the dining area only accommodates 150 and it's, it's supposed to be a, a, a home for 500 people. In every way that it, it's possible to be wrong as a, a accommodation, it, it's wrong. And I'm, I'm not just trying to stop the barge in, in Portland. I don't think it should be used as accommodation anywhere. The conversations that we've been having on the streets today in Weymouth have been that, well, if these are people from war-torn countries, then they should be happy or they should be grateful for what they're, they're given. I mean, how would you react to that? I'd say that what we need to think about is, again, to come back to humanity. We're talking about human beings. They're, they're people who've got dreams and aspirations. They, they, they have whole futures that they, they want to plan, just like everybody else. And I think we need to have the humanity to treat them with, with decency and respect. We're, we're better, or should be better, as a country uh, than, than providing this kind of, of accommodation for, for human beings. There's also news that Suella Braverman would like to now use tents. Uh, yeah, I mean, what do you make of that? <laughs> it beggars belief. I'm, I'm shocked, absolutely shocked at the cruelty of our government. And, and again, I come back, this is the 21st century. We, we should be looking forward and not looking back to the, the 1940s and having a, a land full of, of prison camps. We, we should be moving forward. People belong in, in communities. And I firmly believe that if the judicial review goes ahead, it will determine that uh, planning permission should have been applied for and it will give all of these, these grievances and the light of the day, the opportunity for them to be raised. I know that we've heard a lot about uh, the fire safety aspect of the yes. barge in the recent yes. weeks, but there's also one thing, I don't know if this has been picked up on at all, but I mean, in Manston, there was huge outbreak of disease. I mean, we were seeing things like scabies, which is totally unusual for the United Kingdom. Do you know of any risk assessment of any kind of outbreak that was done at all? I'm, I'm not privy to that, so I, I, can't, I can't answer that question. Mm. What I, I would say is, looking at that accommodation, you, you're talking about, again, 500 people on a, a facility that's being created for 220. Uh, in, in those sort of, of close quarters, it doesn't bear to think 
about what might happen if you if you have a, an outbreak like that. But I, I can't answer your, your question in terms of, of risk assessment. One of your fellow councillors earlier was talking about life jackets and how there wasn't any available. Was that something that you saw when you toured the barge? I didn't see any life jackets. I, I, again, I, I don't know about that. But having said that, you've got four fire exits, uh, two of them empty into the sea. If one of them was, was one of the ones that are on land is, is blocked by fire, you're talking about 500 people trying to get out of one exit through narrow corridors into a, an area that's got a, a security fence. It's a, a wharf that's got a security fence right down the middle of it. So it, it doesn't bear to think what, what could happen. Uh, but again, I, I don't know whether uh, fire safety certificates have, have been issued yet. Uh, we're, we're not kept in the loop by the, the Home Office in, in real terms. Have you been in contact with anyone who's been on the barge? No, no I haven't. But there are various groups that have been, have you been informed about it at all? No, no I haven't. What do you make of that? I mean, the, the argument has been hugely polarising. The entire country is talking about it, which must be incredible for you because it's, I mean, it, it's quite a small island, Portland. What has it been like to be in, essentially under the eagle eye? I think one of the messages that I, I'd like to to give and, and I'd like to use your, your channel as an, an opportunity to do that is if that's all right uh, is that we need to have cool heads and kind hearts again I, I bring it back to humanity we, we need to think about the humanity of, of the, the people on, on the barge and the humanity of our, our community uh, we, we need to treat people with with decency and, and kindness all people do you think that the people who are on the barge have been treated as humans in the past couple of weeks? Not by the Home Office, no, I don't. I've, I've seen some of the letters that have been sent to them you know, saying you, you are, are being sent to, the, to this barge and you have no opportunity to appeal that. If you, if you don't go, the essence of it was that you're going to lose your accommodation. Uh, I've I heard of, of a, a doctor contacted me who'd been treating some of, of the asylum seekers. And, and she was devastated, absolutely devastated. She was saying that the, the, um, they were crying getting on, on board the, the bus to come to Portland. And, and the, the people who were taking care of them were crying too. She was saying that they're just ordinary, ordinary men, nice, nice men, just ordinary men. And I think that's what we need to have in our heads. You know, these are ordinary people. And it, it, it seems unreasonable and, and bizarre that the, the Home Office can say, well, we, we can do this to a group of men. But if you said women and children or families or, or just women, it would suddenly become outrageous. There's been this sort of caricature that's been built around, I would say, the people who've gone on board. Have you seen that at all? No, I haven't. And I, I have to be honest, I've, I've been very busy with both the, the council work that I have to do, uh, my, my own personal work, and, and doing a lot of interviews. So I'm afraid I, I, haven't, I haven't looked at, at that uh, at all, really. Yeah. Can you talk to me a little bit about the dispute that you're going to be going into? Yes, what, what I'm, I'm doing is I'm, I'm uh, doing a, a crowd justice fundraiser, uh, because I have to, I'm doing this as an individual. Uh, our council doesn't have the resources to be able to pay for something like this. We don't have statutory powers. Dorset Council, who, who do have the, the resources, had a, advice that said that it, it was likely to, to fail. So they, they backed off from mounting a legal challenge. There's a, a team of um, solicitors, barristers and, and community groups that have worked hard on producing evidence that there is a legal challenge in terms of planning and that the Home Office and the Home Secretary have circumvented that by taking out this, this whole process in secret, behind closed doors, only announcing it at the last minute and saying to statutory bodies, there you go, you, you make it work. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's essentially what, what I'm doing. We, we're crowdfunding for uh, the, the initial papers the initial papers have, have been sent and served on the home office uh, they were served on the 7th of august they have 14 days to reply and then it, a decision will be made as to whether a judicial review will be granted and that takes i believe two to four months 
And the, the review is essentially to look at the decision making process, to check that the, the Home Office and the Home Secretary have behaved legally within our country's laws. Now, if you, you think about, if you wanted to put up, say, uh, a, a porch on, on your house, you, you'd have to go and apply for planning permission. Um, this is, is no different. Uh, I believe that the, the barge itself, because it's, it's attached to the wharf for sewage, electric, gas, it's more of a permanent structure than uh, a boat. In fact, it, it has no, no uh, motors, no engines. It can't get up and, and move in the same way that a cruise ship can get up and, and move. Uh, I, I believe that they've, uh, the port have, have done alterations to the, the fabric of, of the area. They've, they've laid uh, tarmac, they've, they've uh, I believe, altered buildings that should have required planning permission. So there's a whole range of things that, that should have happened, that haven't happened, because we haven't had that, that scrutiny. The scrutiny that, that goes in, in with having a planning application put in, where that planning application is then open for everybody to view, all of the stakeholders can comment on it, the community can comment on it. And I firmly believe that it, it would be refused planning permission if it had been sent to Dorset Council in, in the normal way. What would be your desired outcome? of this action? My, my desired outcome would, would be that the Bibby stock home would be consigned to the, the dustbin of, of history. As I said, I'm, I'm not one of these NIMBYs. It's not that I don't want the Bibby stock home in my backyard. I don't want it in anybody's backyard. I don't think it, it's a suitable environment to house vulnerable people. And I, I, I would like to see it leave Portland and just sail off into the sunset. If you could speak to Suella Braveman in a personal capacity, it was just you talking, what would you say to her? I'd, I'd ask her how she could sleep at night. These are, are people, human beings, and, and the, to behave so cruelly and insensitively, it, it just, it staggers me. I have no words.